kitchen. Nico's here. Uh, what are you making, Nico? Oh, you're not. It's not Nico, is it? It's someone no, else. Just read the link. <laughs> <laughs> just the. Am I that guy there. Oh, that guy there. For some reason, I thought it was Nico. I don't know why. We're, look, we oh, all get a little is. bit diverted when when okay, Nico's here. Okay, I just start again as if it never happened? Nico's here. We'll be with us Alice. later. Thanks, Alice. <laughs> but first, he's out of the kitchen and he's on our sofa. One half of the TV's most iconic Connery judging panel is here to tell us all about the latest series of MasterChef. Literally, no, not even any cameras on Nico at all. Right? This is the, <laughs> and John Tarot <laughs> <laughs> taking us back to basics next week to start of his uh, sizzling semi-finals. Take a look. So just a moment on the on the hunt for a bargain, but he's with us right now, John Turow. Good to have you with us. Thanks nice for to have it. you on the sofa. Actually, it's really lovely to be on here. It's lovely. Yeah, it's great. Rather than having to be cooking and doing like I don't know, I sort of feel lost. I need a, a fry pan. Got no earpiece. No, no earpiece. I was very disappointed you turned out without any beef in your hands. I know, I know. Look, um, I you, I, I'm back cooking on the sixth of May. I'll make sure I bring some beef. Lovely. If you want to put your request in, but actually, if anybody wants to put a request in out there of what you'd like me to cook, then put something. Let's, you let's can do cook it. Can, you can cook anything. There's there's nothing that you can't cook. Not Come quite. On, you know, I'm not very good with Indian food, but otherwise I'm good. But we're here to talk about MasterChef, not yeah, about me. I can't believe it's an 18 series. series. It's unbelievable. But what's really amazing, and we'll see a clip very, very soon, is Greg and how he's changed so much. But 18 years we've been together, Greg and I. We're the only constant. And, of course, we've done celebrity as well as amateur. We're doing amateur at the moment. Amateur's on our screens at the moment. We've just done the first five weeks of heats. We're going to the semi-finals. And... Alison, you've done MasterChef, haven't you? I have done MasterChef, and it is very difficult, because obviously it's not your own kitchen. No. Uh, so it's very, very scary. But I also worked in a kitchen out and about in a restaurant, and that's when I thought I absolutely thrived. I only got to the quarterfinals, unfortunately, yeah, but that's which still... is where we're at at the moment. But that's but still pretty good. Let's take a look. Why not? Wow. It was amazing. So I pressured, it. Alison. It is so pressured. But the format since then has changed a little bit now, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it has changed. The thing is that, you know, as you know, with MasterChef, the one thing that we want to do is celebrate success. We love to watch people change and gain the confidence and actually just yeah. come out of their shells and be as creative and do whatever they want to do. And that's the beauty of MasterChef. And 18 years on, what we've got to do, we've got to change a little bit because... Otherwise, it becomes like an exam. Right. They get, people get used to it. They sort of watch a show and they go, OK, if I do this, this and this, I can get through that stage. Yeah. And if I do that, 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 I can probably get through that stage. So you've got to make it to the stage. We want people to be adaptable. We want them to be adventurous, we want them to be exciting. And we also want them just to give it a go. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's an amazing competition and it continues to be an amazing competition. So tonight's the last night of the quarterfinals. Yes. What can we expect? And then, look, and then let's look forward to the semi-finals and tell us about that. So what happens now is that what we've done is we've done our five weeks of heats. Uh, that then leaves us with 15 of the top cooks that we've got. And then they will go into the, the semi-finals. There's all sorts of stuff that goes on. Um, we are doing a, a couple of big challenges. We want them to get used to professional kitchens, so I'm going to run the, the whole thing like a professional kitchen and get them used to orders and running the pass for them and just, you know, making sure they're ready for that. Uh, we're going to celebrate the Buttery Biscuit Base, which, of course, is a, a hit single. Well, I didn't even know about this until I've just seen it, but I do recognise the tune. I can't believe what happened with that. That literally went viral, didn't it? Yeah, there was a guy who made this, this extraordinary clip about an all bits and pieces throughout MasterChef. Mm. And within it, there's something crazy like 24 different food references, <laughs> whether it be crunchy, spicy, slippery, wobbly, whatever it might be. So, I mean, look how lovely and young I was there. And, um, look, there I am. Um, but the, the, exactly the same. But, but I, I wish. <laughs> the, um, but I, because of that, we're celebrating the, the, the 10th birthday by saying to them, create a dish using the food references from that song, inspired by it. Oh, great. Um, so there's stuff like that going on, and we celebrate all sorts of stuff. Um, you mentioned Run the Pass. Yeah. Explain to us what that is. So when you have a kitchen, what you do is you have somebody at the front, and you saw just then with Alison, there was a lady there expediting, or expo, and she's running all the orders and bringing everything together in the kitchen. So in a kitchen, what you'll have is you'll have uh, a, a sauce section, a veg section, a main section, dessert section, and everything's got to come out at the same time and then go and be flown, you know, pushed out into the dining room. Yeah. So it's imagine it's like a conductor of an orchestra. Yeah. And without the conductor, the whole thing will fall so apart. So is that the head chef's job? That's it. So you're the boss and you're in control of everything. So if something goes wrong, you're ultimately mm -hmm. So you've got to get the timings just right, haven't you? Absolutely. So you can have somebody cooking scallops, which take three minutes, somebody cooking a steak, which takes eight minutes. So the person doing the steak has to know that the person doing the scallops have to know that the steak's three minutes to come so that they get the scallops on. And then everything has to be moved together. Now, if you're doing that and you've got 20 orders running, 
You've got a lot of stuff happening yeah. all at the same time. So it's fun. Skill, yeah. I always wonder, John, when you're doing MasterChef, can you ever spot someone from the beginning that they're going to go I right to the end? Too. Well, I, I think that, well, yes. There's Obviously, you thought I was a really good chef. I, as this soon as we met you, your smile, your joy, your enthusiasm, that's what you want. You just want enthusiasm. You just want people to be enthusiastic. Uh, Nick Hewitt has a brilliant quote, and I remember him saying it with The Apprentice, and I nick it every so often, and that is very simply, on the first week, we can spot the champion. Really? Absolutely. By the third week, they've gone home. Because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You just don't know what's going to happen. And maybe they pull out all the good stuff in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And then they've got nothing left in the bank. And in the early stages, there's a guy who's a dentist who cooked us amazing vegetarian food. And then he cooked us an amazing chocolate parve. And then after that... <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was sort of the ideas were gone. So it's, it's a really interesting thing that, you know, the whole build-up to MasterChef. So happened. what's most important for you when you, when you look at an aspiring chef or a cook or anyone that can work in the kitchen? Is it, the, is it that response? Is it pure talent? Is it uh, adaptability? Is it response to failure? You know, is it innovation, hard work? Tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick. I mean, all those things. You, you, you know, the other thing that amazes me about MasterChef is let's just remember we're talking about people who have already got careers. Many have been through university. There's a girl on at the moment, Rada, she's been doing law for seven years. You know, and then we've got, a, you know, we've got a dentist. We, you know, one of our winners was a, was a, a, a paediatrician. Mm. So you do, you know, first become a doctor, a surgeon, then go and do another three years. So you talk about 10 years of training. And they change their whole life. So, I mean, the amazing thing is that they've decided, they've made this decision to change their life. They're not happy with what they're doing. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about MasterChef. So once you've got that, you know, want, yeah. and you really want to do it, and that's when the food comes alive. And, and I've always said to you guys on here is that when you cook, you don't cook from your head. You've got to cook from your heart. Yeah. And it flows and you can feel it and you can taste great food. That's why when you go home, food tastes amazing. Mm. Of course, there's love in it. Yeah. And that's what what's a, a MasterChef's all about. Uh, Someone who cooks with their heart is your lovely wife, Lisa. Oh, uh, yeah. And obviously, um, the weekend kitchen has just been incredible. What I want to know is... When you did MasterChef with Lisa, did you fall in love with her cooking first or did you fall in love with her face Ooh, first? That's a great question. Wow. Do you know, I didn't even know who Lisa was. Really? No, I had no idea about uh, at all. And what's really weird is she said to me, I met you. And I went, no, you know, she said, I met you on this morning. I said, no, no, you've never met me on this morning. We she said, friends. I did. And she met me on this morning, on my first ever this morning in 1996. Wow. With Richard and Judy, but Richard and Judy weren't presenting, in Liverpool. Yes. I was cooking for the first ever time, and they sort of showed me John Turow, this new chef coming from London, and this was following an interview with a young actress called Lisa Faulkner. Wow. <laughs> And that we'd met. And you then. don't remember? No idea. It all started with this morning. Everything starts with Everything this morning, doesn't it? So, did morning. you fall in love with the food or a face first? Uh, well, I think you've got to fall in with both, though. You've got to go for both, don't you? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> She's got good legs as well, Alison, I've got to she say. She has. Well, oh, yeah. listen, MasterChef continues tonight, 8.30pm, BBC mm. One. Thanks for having me on the sofa.